have a question from anonymous attendee. Uh, is there a clear biological explanation for between brain synchronization? Um, so there are not a single one, but uh, there are uh, potential candidates, I would say. Uh, so let me, uh, uh, my computer is like super, super slow. Can I share? Whoa. So uh, in 2012, uh, I did a, a paper trying to uh, simulate. Okay, I'm gonna share again my screen to get like a up. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, I can see that. So this is one big question, like what we are measuring when we are measuring this interbrain synchronization. And the thing is that there are many factors contributing to that. So first, uh, the fact of being uh, the same species and having a similar brain uh, is uh, making our dynamics look, look alike. So if you record two random number generator, they won't be synchronized, but that's extreme. Uh, if you record two people from the same uh, environment and with the same uh, neurobiology structure, it would tend to be more similar at the dynamical level. So is it like spurious or is it like relevant? Well, that depends on the scientific question. And uh, indeed, uh, proper design of the experiment allow you to contrast what is the baseline synchronization between the two brains. And in a way, that's the, also the hyping, the hype part of hyperscanning I get uh, as a reviewer often is like people are always surprised to find uh, interbrain synchronization. Actually, the most surprising would to not find any. Because uh, of course, one human brain looks like another human brain. Uh, the importance is to really make the, the proper contrast from an experimental design point of view. And so beyond the neurobiological similarity, you have also the behavioral similarity. So to what extent you have more synchronization between two brains when they are doing the same task? Uh, and to what extent you have more interbrain synchronization if they are doing the same task in the same culture? So for instance, there is Kitayama and Andreas Ropenor uh, work on cultural neuroscience and how, for instance, in Asia or in America or in, 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 in Europe, you will not have necessarily the same uh, uh, patterns of uh, social coordination. So culture is also part of these uh, factors that you, you should account. And uh, so that's more like the similarity aspect. And so the other phase that is uh, uh, the most interesting to me is the communication aspect. What, what kind of information is transmitted from one physiological system to another physiological system to the mean of perception and action. And in that case, you can have unidirectional flow of information or bidirectional flow of information. And those two things, the two different uh, factors are connected because it's true communication and the reciprocal exchange of uh, people that we are building our uh, cultural similarity and our culture. And meanwhile, uh, working on autism and all the neurodevelopmental condition, neurobiology and the similarity or dissimilarity uh, of neurobiological grounding could impact your approach of communication with others. And so uh, that's to show you one, uh, one possibility of uh, mechanisms of this interbrain synchronization. So in 2012, I did like a, a dyadic uh, neurocomputational models of two brains interaction using uh, connectomics. And one of the conclusions, so the, the idea is to simulate two brains uh, in interaction. And uh, I passed on the technical part, but whoop. to make long story short, what's going on with those simulation is that the way you are, whoop, uh, shaped anatomically constrain your propensity to resonate with another person. 
And so like uh, uh, here in this graph, you have on the X axis, the coupling between people, inter-individual coupling, C inter, which is in the model quantify the flow of information from one virtual brain to another virtual brain. And on the Y axis, you have the hyperfect looking values of the interbrain connectivity. And what you see is that indeed, even in absence of communication of information, so when C inter is zero, there is a spurious synchronization, even in the scrambled anatomy, uh, because the system is not totally random. There's still a similarity intrinsically of uh, dealing with similar physiological system. And when you compare the red and the green uh, lines with the blue line, now you get the, uh, the anatomy. So how the, the real structure of the human brain is already facilitating similarity compared to just random connections. And uh, more interestingly, when you increase the coupling of, and the exchange of information, it doesn't increase in the red and, and the green li uh, line. So the, the random network uh, doesn't potentiate interbrain synchronization, but the real connectivity in the blue line, uh, in that case, you increase the interbrain synchronization if you increase the flow of information. So it means that uh, the real uh, interbrain synchronization that are interesting, so to say, are the ones that are uh, between this point on the upper right and this point on the middle left. So the difference that you gain uh, compared to baseline when you exchange information between those two systems. So that's okay. That's one uh, mechanisms of uh, those interbrain synchronization, so uh, shared anatomy.